Hey, what's up guys? Matt with the Movement System. In this video, we're gonna talk about the physiology and five functions of testosterone hormone. We're gonna to try to clear up the physiology of what's going on in the bloodstream, what's going on in the cells, talk about how transport works, and then also talk about how this practically relates to athletes and training. Let's go ahead and dive into it. Okay, so testosterone is a primary androgen hormone. Hormones act through the bloodstream and cause signals and then also can enter cells to create other actions, which we're gonna talk about in a second. So, we, we know is that for males, testosterone is produced in the testes and enters the bloodstream, and for females, it can be produced in the ovaries or the adrenal glands and be entered in the bloodstream that way. We know that both males and females do produce testosterone, it's just different concentrations with males being higher. Now, testosterone can be in a free form, but often in the bloodstream, it's bound to either albumin or sex hormone binding globulin. So you can see here's a testosterone molecule, and in the bloodstream, it's typically with a transporter there to move about within the bloodstream. Okay, when we think about testosterone actually causing action, because we know in the bloodstream, it can do some anabolic signaling, but to actually cause protein building and the functions that we're gonna talk about, it actually has to move into a cell. So what we can see here is a cell membrane. So this, this outside is the cell membrane. The testosterone is moving with something called 5-alpha reductase into the cell. And now it's a form called dihydrotestosterone. And I don't want to get into the details of all the exact enzymes and transport mechanisms and stuff. I want to give you guys the big, big picture here. So dihydrotestosterone can now bind to an androgen receptor. And that androgen receptor is, again, within the cell, bound to testosterone, and now can actually enter the nucleus and actually cause transcription, meaning building of proteins. And this is where the actual action takes place within the nucleus. Uh, again, we have that transport into the nucleus. There's transcription factors. There's DNA. And that will allow us to actually build proteins. Okay, so that's big picture what's going on with the physiology. Now, what are the actual functions? How does this relate to our athletes and working out and stuff like that? The number one function would actually be promoting muscle protein synthesis. So when we say it goes through this physiological process, signaling in the bloodstream, transport to the cell, and then actual movement all the way into the nucleus to do transcription, that transcription is actually turning amino acids into proteins and those proteins can be encoded based on the instructions within the nucleus but those could be muscle proteins for example or actin and myosin and our other proteins that are involved in muscle contraction and now testosterone is actually different than other anabolic hormones like growth hormone and insulin like growth factor one in this second action that it's actually also anti-catabolic so anabolic is the process of building Catabolic is a process of breakdown. So when we think about catabolic roles, that would be muscle protein degradation. And testosterone actually has a function to work against muscle protein breakdown. If this video has been helpful for you so far, make sure you support educational YouTube channels, smash that like button, subscribe, and turn your notifications on so you don't miss future videos. Okay, function number three is stimulation of growth and development. And this is actually broader than just protein synthesis. This function involves stimulation of secondary sex characteristics in males and is much more significant after puberty. One thing I most forgot to mention is that there are also other hormones floating around in the bloodstream like follicle stimulating hormone or luteinizing hormone and those could have a secondary effect on the action of testosterone, its binding and its transport. And we actually know from research that inhibiting luteinizing hormone, for example, can decrease the effectiveness of testosterone. So while this physiological explanation was more focused on muscle building and protein building, there is a function of testosterone to actually promote bone mineral density maintenance. So preventing things like osteoporosis. And although the physiology of that's a little bit different, just know that testosterone does have that role in that relationship to that. Okay, role number five is an emerging field of neuroendocrinology, and this is something that has mixed evidence, but I do want to mention. Okay, so we know from a workout that acutely after a workout, especially a workout that involves large muscle groups, short rests, some metabolic stress, so higher volumes, those type of variables in a workout do cause an acute increase in testosterone, an acute increase in the use of this pathway, 
but we also have chronic upregulation of different aspects of the body from working out. But we also have chronic upregulation of different mechanisms over time from this response. So things like our androgen receptor density can potentially increase over time. And also from a neural aspect, we can upregulate our neurotransmitters such as acetylcholine, again, from that chronic training effect. So this isn't meant to be a comprehensive video. There are many functions of testosterone, but hopefully this gives you a good visual for the basic physiology and the main functions of testosterone. If it did, make sure you smash that like button, subscribe, and check out some of my other videos. See you guys in the next one. Thanks.